Hello everybody, James Rink here. I'm here in Sedona of Arcturus Ra and I just wanted to go over a short uh, explanation about some of my own experiences as a super soldier and also a little bit about the SSP. So um, going back into time, my self-awakening process began back in my early 20s when I was going to church actually. Uh, during that area, era of my life, um, I was I grew up Southern Baptist and um, it was right around, I would say, uh, I started looking into uh, conspiracy material such as not just 9-11, but also um, the alleged Illuminati and, and um, as well as what some of the early Christian texts actually were discussing about reincarnation. And I learned that the um, original Council of Nicaea were, uh, before that era anyway, the church, early church, believed in reincarnation. And there were actually traces of it in the Bible, that you know, in my in my father's house there are many mansions, and I know Edgar Casey talked about that. But um, what I found really strange is that okay, so I just learned that well, well, maybe there's this alternate view of history. But as as I started um, when I was in my Sunday school classes and so on, and I would confront other people there about these belief systems. They would look at me with a glazed eye. Um, they had no response to it, or they just say, "Oh, that's that's Buddhist, that's demonic." And I'm like, "Well, how do you know that? If the early if, if, if evidence shows says so, it, it began to really wake in my mind to realize that there was a lot of brainwashing and programming within my own experience, and I decided that okay, so if if the very fundamental thing that I was programmed to believe was wrong what else was wrong so I decided to say well I'm gonna just pull away from whatever belief system that I had was was um, put into me and look for some a new aspect of what's really going on and right around that time I um, was um, I met a, an individual on um, it was actually a Christian chat um, Christian teens chat room um, by by the his, well, his name was Nathan, and he had experiences of telekinesis. He could see the future, aura, and um, he claimed he had altars. And I later realized, I mean, I, from my Christian programming, I thought that might have been demonic, but I also knew there could also be explanation of trauma or DID, P, um, um, MPD, associated with that. So. I suggested to Nathan that maybe he was just a victim of some kind of government brainwashing program and at that point I had um, Nathan inform me that he was indeed part of these programs and that there was a Gray Wilder involved, um, a, a Dr. Gray sorry, and Gray Wilder comes in later on. But um, so he said that he was taken uh, um, and used by uh, Dr. Gray. So I said, suggest it, and that's when I started looking into some of the alien stuff. So I'm like, okay, well, what you know, the church never really talks about aliens. I mean, they might they might mention there might be demons or angels, but physical flesh beings. Clearly, there's evidence that this stuff exists, but but churches don't want to really discuss it in Sunday school or class. It's like, well, so and it's also the same thing in school and uh, college institutions. Nobody wants to t talk about this, but. Just because you don't want to talk about it doesn't make it less real. It just it's still there. So why ignore it? If if it's part of our reality, then we should accept it. So um, at that point, uh, Nathan's alters came out, and he said he could he activated my DNA and that I could do everything that he could do. And then he also later on he informed me that um, they were deleting all of his memories and that he would no longer exist. Um, and amongst other a few other things so I started getting needle marks cut marks scratches and so I had some kind of physical activity um, um, contact taking place in my life and then at that point um, Nathan later I did find Nathan later uh, his memories were he claims his memories were deleted but um, uh, the whole anyway it, it's quite a long story you have to actually get my book about it but uh, Nathan uh, he's no longer in my as part of my life but um, moving forward I still I still continued getting needle marks and cut marks and I knew that there that th this were physical this wasn't um, 
I mean, some suggested it could have been a manifestation of my own um, belief system. But when you have chunks of flesh missing from your body, um, and actual implants embedded in, the, in, the, in where the chunks of flesh are removed, then you know that there is some, there's clearly some kind of force on this planet that has technology way advanced than the general public is being told. So that's when I started working with different remote viewers and, um, and also my own um, meditation as well to determine well what's going on here and and um, I learned about the super soldier aspect in the mill lab at least that's what we called it back in the day and then later on over the years I continued to get more and more information about the SSP and some of the projects and experiments that I was used as a super soldier off-world and um, so uh, that's why I decided to set up Super Soldier Talk because there was no community back, at least around 2010 when I started doing this, not, not that I was aware of anyway, a, a community of, of a similar experiencers that could network and work with each other to help recover their memories because nobody was willing to really help. No, no um, doctors or um, we could not get, really get government assistance you know, from the VA if you were part of these experiments. Uh, typically, they would declare you zero is one of the terms they would use. Um, or you, if you're part of USAP doc, they would just put you kind of hide your file or delete your file from the VA. That, that's if you were actually in the armed forces. For some, many of us, we weren't even in the armed forces that were experimented on. So, um, so here we are, many uh, at least a decade from when I first started, and it's clear after doing at least at this point in time I've done nearly 300 interviews that this this phenomena is very real and um, it's it's here to stay it is not going to go away going to church going getting another college degree or um, just or even just going through um, if you are in <laughs> of that age going through public school or whatnot depending on what, what age you are listening to this going to these institutions and pretending like this isn't real is not going to solve the problem. It's still here. So now the question is, are you willing to accept it? Are you willing to grow just like a child grows up that needs a bigger shoes? It's, there's nothing wrong with growing up. It's time to do it and, uh, and accept that there is another side. And yeah, yeah okay. So we, we know the government probably lied to us. Um, and, and we, for the listeners of this show, you probably know the reasons why at this point, if, or at least those who watch my, my content or our tourists raw. So um, at this point, what are we going to do about this? And uh, I've always been about trying to take action. Um, I mean, I know my show is called Talk, you know, Super Soldier Talk, right? But uh, how about we could do a little bit more than just talk? Let's introduce some kind of uh, modality to help integrate, and that's why I have the meditation cube that I um, sell on my website, neologicaltech.com. But um, I also like to promote other um, inventors like Arcturus, and that's why I'm, I'm bringing him on my show as well. And also explain how you started. How did you find out about regressive hypnotherapy and that you can actually get a storyline to what's what's happening with you and then you realize there is a bigger picture there are patterns the shit's making sense uh, how did okay. you even uh, stumble okay. upon regressive hypnotherapy okay so um one of the modalities that i like to use is regression i um i my me my as myself, I'm not necessarily um, certified in any kind of regression. However, I've done a couple hundred hours of it, so I would say I would have experience. But um, I'm, I'm self-taught. I taught myself initially uh, years ago when I was um, dealing with my own trauma. Um, I had OCD issues, ADHD, severe depression. Um, this was going to from, on for my early 20s. And I, I tried the pharmaceutical approach, and it made me very sick. Uh, as in, it destroyed my um, gut flora, which uh, you know, if you want your gut health goes downhill, pretty much everything else goes downhill. So um, I decided to get into subliminals and self hypnosis, and I learned the techniques that from those tracks and tapes and many different. Um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, from from that, I was able to learn how to do in inductions and and regressions and also um, you know the conclusion sequence and I learned what to do what not to do what because uh, there's a few co there's a few keywords and phrases you're really not supposed to say because you're talking to this instead of talking to your conscious mind you're talking to your subconscious and the subconscious doesn't understand negatives so 
once you learn the ma um, the magic code words behind it all, um, then you can. Uh, then I decided to work with some other people, um, and at this time there were no doctors or really therapy. I mean, okay, there were a few, but but they would have charged a lot of money. So we we didn't have much money because if we if you've been through a lot of these programs, you most likely are dealing with a lot of trauma, and some of us are unable to hold a hold a job or barely function. So we worked to, as a network. Of those of us who wanted to do this, um, I, I volunteered my time to regress other individuals, and it turns out I was actually really good at it because I'm able to psychosomatically become an aspect of this other individual's subconscious mind, so I could guide them whatever direction. So, in this dreamscape or this um, regression type environment, uh, there's a typical, there's a few things um, I like to do. And uh, some, so one of the things we do is we like to go back in time to the actual moment of whatever trauma or, or if there was injections or if there was contact with ET. And depending on the individual's um, connection with their third eye, you know, their source, um, depends on um, how much information they get. But many of these individuals are very, uh, are, are, who were in these projects are um, connected to um, extraterrestrials that can channel through them. Uh, sometimes people can speak in foreign languages or alien languages. They can um, interact with extraterrestrials as well, and we can get some information about possible so, so future. That, some, that's always um, an interest on Super Soldier Talk. What's going to happen in the future? Uh, way back in the day, in 2000, uh, I guess it was 11. One of the people that remote viewed the future saw a really horrific timeline where if the Cabal won, that is, in which there were giant spire towers being built where the rich lived on the top and all the poor people lived on the bottom and the food had no um, energetics to it. Uh, giant fields were being grown by um, robots and uh, milk was being grown just genetically engineered. Um, 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 Uter, uh, utter, was it uters? I forgot what the the milk the milk glands were there the, from the from the cows were genetically engineered, so that they didn't even need the cow anymore. Just huge factories where they produced these um, and cloned meat. So and uh, people were basically being enslaved. So um, as we were looking into the future, a really negative timeline. I realized that well, what if we could put this information out there and change the timeline to positivity? And that's where we try to we bring in these ETs, and and we found that um, by just uh, being positive ourselves, we're able to magnetically charge reality to um, become positive like ourselves. And all this negativity that I mean, we were seeing a pulse shift possibly taking place around I think it was November of 2011. And then looking at that timeline, there was what's left of humanity was just basically cannibalistic. So that timeline also went away. And then um, every time we kept going into the future, it, it became more and more positive to now to the point where um, I just uh, I really think the future is going to be an amazing place. Although we still we still have a transitional period, we have to go to a new financial system before um, the great stuff comes out. But um, anyway, so yeah. Um, yeah, so regression, I it definitely, I feel it works and uh, give it a try. Uh, you don't, um, I, I still do regressions by, by the way, but um, I'm quite booked up. For, I, I'm actually, so so that's where I set up my my, chan, um, my website, Super Soldier Talk. I have a section on there where people can um, sign up and find somebody else to help them out because I'm, I'm way too busy now to do that. Explain how... One of the, 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 your talks, you you said that you c they can use your soul for 20 years in another timeline, and you're gone here in a second. How does that? Uh, so the okay. observer doesn't know that you were actually gone, but when you right. wake up the next day and you have a lifetime of memories you didn't have before. Explain that. Okay, so um, I'm going to go a little bit more in depth with some of these injection marks and needle marks. Now, I know that they're being used. Well, at least one aspect to erase memories. The question is, why would they need to erase memories when um, I, I, I recall my what I believe to recall my civilian life? And that's where it goes into these 20-year back programs. Now, we we always called it mill labs back in the day, 
um, I, I assume they were taking us and putting us back on and then, and then racing our members for that but it's a lot more complicated than that they would actually um, there's many ways they could do it they could um, physically take they could take our physical body perhaps take it to the moon put it in stasis take our soul out create a clone copy and, I mean obviously put our soul in that clone copy and then we would conduct them um, service for the SSP for 20, a period of 20 years. Uh, sometimes they could renew the contracts a couple more times, 20, 60, um, 40 years and so on. In my particular particular case, going through all the records and the regression work I've done, uh, the Akashic records and so on, ACIO records, it appears I've done at least 330 years of service in that particular manner. But um, They've been doing this continuously, um, these doing these time loops on me throughout my lifetime, and it, it began way before even Nathan. It began even before I was born, and there was time loops. Um, my my original records show I was in the U.S. Army, um, James Mar um, Martin Rilsberg, and uh, I died in 1979. They reanimated me, um, and that body is down in uh, uh, Los Alamos now. Um, and they cybernated that particular body, but they also created a copy and inserted my soul into a new copy and resurrogated me. So there's these there's these continual time loops. So you, um, many of us have been involved in these projects. Uh, the numbers I'm getting close to four million people are were actually t converted into super soldiers worldwide. But there's even more uh, up to a million people a year are being abducted by the SSP and put into service. And this has been going on since. The 19, mid 1950s is when the contract was signed with the U.S. government and the uh, the Antarctic Germans. So when people challenge you and say, "Well, you have all of these stories," you know, I mean, I heard you saying there's some physical that. evidence. Yeah, you know, um, not that I, I'm here to convince or convert any skeptic, but um, how do you how do you know by collecting data? There, there is storyline to it because there's others that have similar experience that I don't know, but we have similar storylines. So, so what do you say to those who say, well, you, th th that's very, very nice science fiction, but you have no proof. What do you say to those people? What, in your experience, what you remember and how you compare data and mm -hmm. when, how does it make sense? What do you say? Yeah, well, for the individuals out there who are skeptic and um, who want proof for me, um, I have close to three or four thousand pictures of being injected I, I get them nearly every day um, but they say well how do you know you're not doing it yourself well some of these 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 injection marks are triangular shaped scabs I one time was on Valentine's Day I think it might have been in 2010 or 2009 but it was the shape of a, of a heart so um, I'm not saying that they love me uh, I think they're more like um, maybe they they love they love my dna but they don't really love me but um so there is physical evidence um but if you're still a skeptic say well i don't really believe that i do have i did get my records from dod uh it's umbra 8 and i was involved in three projects project abandonment and um that particular project had to deal with defunct super soldiers that were not um um considered usable for the project i was actually uh constantly rebelling and um, I was one of the few super soldiers there that didn't really go along with the program, so they needed to correct me <laughs> using Nano, Pico, or Femtotech. Um, I was up also part of a, part of another MK Ultra seed projects to see if they could trigger me using code words. Um, and then the other project had to do with uh, um, my genetics um, to see if I had um, basically I, I don't have human physiology. But um, obviously, I guess you would have to dissect me to, to prove it, and I'm not not any I'm not interested in that right now. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> but um, I, I guess you know if you need more physical evidence, I, I really don't know what else to tell you because these projects are secret, and um, it as a veteran of the SSP, we probably are not going to get any recognition by the government um, of the of the governments of this world until after Nasara takes place. At least that's what I was told. So yeah, to to wrap it up, do you think that the the, the black government that the regular government is even does 
do they even know what the other government because you know what the government is compartmentalized the commercial idea of a government is an illusion so do you think that within the compartmentalization of the government that the that the that the that you were in a department where the, 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 the regular government structures don't even know, they wouldn't even have any clearance to know what's going on. Okay, so let's let's actually discuss who's actually doing this. Yeah. Because um, there's some people actually some people are still emailing me. Well, why is the government doing this and this and that to you? And can't you why can't you stop them? This this and, and I, I, I write these people back. The government's not doing this, uh, folks. Don't you can't blame the government. First of all, CIA, NSA. Uh, they don't really have access to this. DIA, um, they're more connected to the Alliance. Um, the Alliance has some access. They are aware. The, the Alliance is actually being run by the Andromedians and the Arcturians at this moment. And uh, so they are actually running the show of what you see going on in, around this world. Um, but the key is we, there's, a, of course, the great um, awakening process and uh, waking people up. There's a... a a script that they're following but um, Trump is also part of this alliance and he is a actor so um, the alliance is working with Space Force and Space Force is uh, a member of the Trumverative which is based on um, it's a group of planetary corporations that are running what is going on with uh, basically they come together in a council meeting and decide what is humanity's what's humanity's future going to look like so some of these planetary corporations are really nasty and nefarious we have groups like monarch which has a giant dumb located underneath um toronto and it also stretches into the united states and uh they're pretty much bad um associated with anything negative on this planet umbrella is busy uh, doing their genetic engineering of their viruses and they're from another alternate reality in which they release the zombie virus Ouroboros so they're busy releasing viruses here in this timeline and um, the, the one that's probably in the, in the most mentioned in the media and on everybody's mind right now is an umbrella op um, another um, planetary corporation um, that you should probably be aware of would be uh, the Shaw House and they are based in a dumb underneath London and they are in charge of all the human trafficking on this planet um, for children and so on associated even with um, Montauk and Montauk was another time travel experiment that I was I was unfortunately involved with uh, for way too many years than I than is probably nor, um, most people could handle but um, Montauk the, yeah they were manipulating and changing the timeline so that these families that are in charge of the these programs and um, corporations could continue their their dynasty way longer than it should have you know we actually went into a breakaway civilization back in 1820 with um, Tartaria and that was where beans from that came in from Thula area up in the inner um, up far north that came and settled and brought advanced technology like that steampunk era of anti-gravity free energy and um, the whole timelines got reset by the Draco through um, cataclysms that uh, erased Tartaria from our timeline. So here we are, um, we're, <laughs> humanity is about headed to another breakaway civilization and the question is are we going to make it and I think we are this time around. <laughs>